What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Kid Supreme. Back in the video, we got World War II over simplified part uno. Now, if you're new here, welcome to the channel, homie. Just be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you can see more bangers from your boy. You feel me? Because the grind never stops. But hey, today, still, we got some very, very interesting videos on deck. But right now, we got War, World War II over simplified. Very, very excited, bro. I've been getting to a lot of different videos lately. A lot, a lot of different videos. And I've been having a real blast, you know. I'm getting to literally whatever. I'm down to right to whatever. So please, please, in the comments, let me know what videos I want to see next. What, because I'm down for whatever, bro. And today I got to a bunch of cool stuff. So I got this. I got the History of Japan video. I can go check that reaction out after this. And I also got the, the Hitler oversimplified as well today. So y'all can go check out all that stuff. I got a whole bunch of videos today. So. Thank y'all, because a lot of these suggestions are, or a lot of these reactions are suggestions from y'all and recommendations from y'all, so I appreciate y'all, because y'all be really putting me on to a whole lot of cool stuff to react to, so I'm interested to see how this one's going to be, World War II oversimplified, um, yeah, just let me know in the comments what uh, videos you want to see next, and uh, yeah, just appreciate y'all, I want to give a big, big shout out to all y'all for being so cool, being so supportive, being here with me through this journey, you feel me, it's road to 50k right now, so we're going insane, I want to keep on dropping these bangers for y'all, I want to keep on flooding, um, flooding, every, flooding, flooding videos out Y'all, you feel me? Because y'all deserve it. Y'all been so supportive of me, so I owe it to y'all to keep on flooding y'all with these bangs. Y'all know the grind doesn't stop. So we're gonna see how this one is. World War Two of oversimplified part. This one. video was made possible by Skillshare. Churchill was a man with many talents. He was an artist, a butterfly enthusiast, and he had an unpublished manuscript about aliens. Clearly, he was a man with an insatiable thirst for knowledge. Maybe he could have loaded up his computer and logged onto Skillshare. An online learning community with more than 19,000 classes in design, business, technology, and more. Perhaps he was considering a side career in fashion, but didn't know where to start. On Skillshare, he would find courses in fashion design and description. Skillshare is under $10 a month. And if you'd like to try it out first, then I've got a deal just for oversimplified viewers. That using the link in the description. Returns to this newspaper. Very smooth sponsor. It's not like that. A young man by the name of Benito Mussolini moves from Italy to Switzerland to avoid military service. He gets big into socialism, working for trade unions, writing for socialist newspapers, advocating a violent overthrow of European monarchies, the whole shebang. This gets him in a bit of trouble with the Swiss police, so he gets arrested, sent back to Italy, set free, returns to Switzerland, is arrested again, goes back to Italy again, completes his military service after previously avoiding it, and then after a brief stint as an elementary school teacher, he finally returns to work as an avid socialist. <laughs> his speeches and journalistic Look abilities made him famous among Italian socialists. He was anti-war, so when Italy colonized Libya in 1910, he rioted and got arrested. Then World War I came along, and once again he protested Italy's involvement. But then he thought, wait a minute, this war could bring about the social climate needed to overthrow European monarchies and bring about the socialist revolution everywhere. And suddenly he was pro-war, but his fellow socialists didn't like his new pro-war stance, so they kicked him out of the party. So then he said, you know what? I'm done with socialism. We need something new, not based on class divisions tearing us apart, but based on unity through nationality. We'll conquer the Mediterranean and reunite all Italian peoples, just like the days of the Roman He's Empire. Next level. I'll call it fascismo, and it will guide the Italian nation to greatness. That's all well and good, Mr. Mussolini, <laughs> but what kind of haircut am I giving you? Let's go with... Bold. This is gonna be a good one, I can already tell. Italy had been on the winner's side in World War I, and they hoped they were going to get a lot out of it, but in the end, they only got a little, and they felt cheated. On top of that, a bad economy and weak governments meant that the Italian people were a little unhappy. So when Mussolini came along and said that he could fix everything, his fascist movement gained a lot of support. In 1922, he went to the king and said, make me prime minister, or I'll make me prime minister. And the king said, you and what army? This army. <laughs> And this here is a miniature gun model. What does that give up? Fair enough. Then he went about establishing a dictatorship with himself at its center. Europe had its first fascist dictator. Next up, Germany. Germany had been on the loser's side, and they got absolutely wrecked by the Treaty of Versailles. They lost territory, had to demilitarize the Rhineland, had to reduce their army to just 100,000 men, couldn't have an air force, had to pay the Allies a huge amount of money that it didn't have, and a new rule was established that every Englishman withheld the right to walk into the center of Berlin, pick out any German they wanted, and spank the hell out of them. I made that last one up, but it okay. helps you understand how all of this felt to Germans. Okay, okay. On top of that, a bad economy and weak say. governments meant that when a small angry man with a silly mustache came along and said that he could fix everything, 
everything? The German people loved it. Hitler had been a soldier during World War I, oh. and he was crazy patriotic. And nobody was madder than him about Germany's humiliation. He helped start a new political party, and in 1923 attended a march on Munich with his boys. And then he got arrested. But his popularity grew and grew, and in 1933, the president made him chancellor. He believed he was Germany's great destined savior, and he went full megalomaniac, establishing a dictatorship with himself at its center. Europe had fascist dictator number two. Hitler and Mussolini had a lot of the same ideas, but more importantly, they had the same enemies, and they started to get along. Anyone else want to be friends? Franco? No? You good? I do. Who's that? It's Japan, and they've taken over northern China. Let's rewind a bit. Japan had isolated itself from the rest of the world for over 200 years until the Americans showed up and said you're gonna trade with us and you're gonna like it. Mm -hmm. Then the Western powers imposed a bunch of unequal treaties, meaning Japan's economy was bust. They also had no natural resources, so they decided to go get some. They went to war with China to gain a sphere of influence over Korea, and they took a bunch of China's stuff. But then the West said, hey, cut that out. And since Japan couldn't take on the West, they said, okay, I guess we'll just go home. Wait a minute, what are you doing? Taking advantage of a weakened China and setting up spheres of influence. But I was the one who weakened them. We know. And you guys didn't let me have anything. We know. That seems unfair. We, we don't know. think so. <laughs> Okay, see ya. So Japan thought, screw this, and went to war with Russia, and stunned everyone by actually winning. Then they fully annexed Korea, but they didn't stop there. In World War I, they took Germany's colonies and islands in Asia. And then in an incident that was maybe staged by the Japanese army, a bomb blew up a Japanese train in Manchuria, giving them an excuse to launch an invasion and take over. So here's the situation. Nazi Germany, fascist Italy, and Japan all believe they're racially superior, all feel hostility towards the allies, and all want to militarize and take over more stuff. And so they did. Let's start with Germany. Hitler hated the Treaty of Versailles, and now he was ready to begin on doing it. In complete violation of the treaty, the first Luftwaffe squadrons were set up, conscription was introduced, and he pimped up his army. The allies did nothing. Then Hitler sent his army back into the demilitarized Rhineland, giving orders to immediately retreat if the Allies showed up. The Allies did nothing. With his military re-strengthened, he could now move on to step two. He wanted to rapidly increase the Aryan population, and to do so, he needed Lebensraum. Or in other words, he would have to take over the world. But for now, a good portion of Europe would do, and he began eyeing up his neighbors. The Allies finally started to get worried, so they implemented a fairly useless diplomatic strategy called appeasement, and it went a little something like this. Hitler would say, I want that thing, and the Allies would say, you can't have that thing, okay, you you can have that thing, but no more. I want that thing. And repeat. In 1938, Hitler's army marched into Austria and just took it with no resistance. Boom. This is Germany now. Next, he demanded to be given the Sudetenland, an area of Czechoslovakia with many ethnic Germans. Everything. The Allies held a meeting with Hitler in Munich and said, Look, we're going to give you what you Hang on. This meeting is about my territory. Shouldn't I come to the meeting too? Anyways. Anyway, we're going to give you what you want. <laughs> really? Yeah. Just like that? Yep. What's the catch? Just sign this piece of paper promising you won't invade the rest of Czechoslovakia. Okay. Then Chamberlain returned home victorious, waving his signed piece of paper in the air, declaring crisis to be averted and the continuation of world peace, and we built a statue of Chamberlain in his honor, and every day on the 30th of September we celebrate Chamberlain Day. Hitler's invading the rest of Czechoslovakia. What? He's invading the rest of Czechoslovakia. <laughs> oh. You lied to me. What do you expect? I'm Hitler. Not to be outdone, Mussolini also wanted to get in on the action. He thought to himself, isn't there a not yet colonized nation somewhere which is so underdeveloped that the people would be defending themselves against our tanks with literal bows and arrows and wooden spears? Oh, there is? Fantastic. And so he took it. Italy also wanted to control the entrance to the Adriatic oh Sea, so they occupied Albania. Then, in another incident which was maybe staged by the Japanese, gunfire was exchanged by Japanese and Chinese troops at the Marco Polo Bridge and the Japanese launched yet another invasion against China. They swept through Beijing and Shanghai, and then advanced- So Japan, Russia, and Italy was taking over everything, bruh. Like, you seen Hitler, but he was like, you know what, just don't, you can take stuff, but don't, don't keep taking stuff, and he just kept taking stuff more and more and more. This is his, through his regime, because he started off as a soldier in World War One, and then dude went, started going, you know, going crazy, uh, and uh, just was the dictator, all that, and started doing whatever that. So hit Japan, Italy, and uh, Germany are just taking over everything at this point. Thanks to the Yangtze Valley to China's then capital, Nanking. It was here that saw the worst of Japan's shocking atrocities committed against the Chinese people. What? 
Back in Europe, Germany and Italy made their relationship status official by signing the Pact of Steel. Then, Hitler turned his eyes towards Poland and the hated Polish corridor splitting Germany in two. At this point, the Allies really had to put their foot down, and they warned him that an invasion of Poland would mean war. Hitler had planned to continue his advance eastward, but he didn't want to end up fighting a war on two fronts. So for now, he made an alliance with Stalin, saying, How about we both invade Poland and split it between the two of us, and I definitely won't not refrain from not betraying you sometime in the future. Sounds... Good. The IRS is accepting I returns. Can, bro. Shout out to this dude. His, his, his channel's caught over simplified. Shout out to him, man. Cause this, cause these videos are breaking down and stuff. Like it's a lot to take in at once, but it they, they find I don't know how they do it, but they find a way to this to make you just stay tuned in and locked in the entire time, and you can literally see everything they understand everything they're saying. This new alliance stunned the West. On the 1st of September 1939, German troops entered Poland, and Britain and France declared war on Germany. Mm. The Poles fought hard, but they were no match for the two giants crashing down on them from either side. Then came a period known as the Phony War, where everyone just sort of sat around not doing much. <coughs> the French had launched a small invasion into the Saarland, but they maintained mostly defensive positions, and after a while decided to just turn around and call it a day. Speaking of France, the French were still super proud of their victory in World War I, and they hadn't really moved on from it. They still used horses, they dispatched messages by motorbike instead of using radio, orders from the commander-in-chief were usually pretty vague, and the troops were rarely inspected. They built a line of defenses along their German border, but didn't bother extending it all the way to the channel, and they wouldn't launch artillery strikes against Germany out of fear of being retaliated against. In a war, they didn't want to attack the enemy. And at wow. first the UK wasn't much better. Chamberlain still naively hoped that the war could be ended diplomatically. Instead of bombing raids, the RAF dropped propaganda leaflets over German cities, which one air marshal said likely did nothing but provide the continent with toilet paper for the duration of the war. They also only sent 200,000 men to France, while the French had mobilized millions. Both Britain and France wanted to avoid a repeat of the First World War, and so they wanted to keep the war as far from home as possible. So they turned their eyes north, towards Norway. Neutral Sweden was exporting iron ore to Germany through neutral Norway. So the Allies asked them if they could please stop it. Dang, you know what would be cool, bro? If everyone just got along, shit, like, why doesn't you need, like, nigga, everyone got, it's like everyone got their own crib, right? This is what it's basically, it's like everyone got their own crib, right? Before I need this, like, everyone got their own crib, right? We chilling, everyone chilling, right? And then someone just like, you know what? My crib is cool and everything, but I want your crib. Even though you got your own crib, they're like, no, I want my crib and I want your crib. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it all starts, because it's, it's it, it is all very preventable, bro. It's really all preventable, you know what I mean? It's like just, it's crazy, you know what I'm saying? How all of this played out, but it's like really all preventable, bro. Like, dudes just invading people for no reason, bro. Just because they want more power, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's like everyone got their own crib, but niggas want each other's cribs, even though they got their own stuff. It don't make no sense. It really don't. But... Hey, that's what they, that's what they do. That's what they do. Iron ore to Germany, but this request was refused. Then the Soviet Union attacked Finland. So the Allies said, how about we land troops in Norway and move them across Sweden to go help out your good pal Finland, and along the way maybe take control of all your armfields. But Norway and Sweden still said no. So the UK mined the waters around Norway to force any transport ships into international waters, and they also attacked a German tanker they found in the area. Mm. Hitler realized what the Allies were up to, and he quickly moved to secure his supply of iron ore. He launched an invasion through Denmark into Norway. The Allies rushed to land troops at key ports along the coast, but Germany had taken control of Norway's airfields, and their air superiority decided the fight. The Allies had to retreat. After this slightly embarrassing failure, Chamberlain resigned and was replaced with Winston Churchill, who had a slightly different approach to dealing with the Germans. Hitler's overall strategy was similar to Germany's First World War strategy. Attack France, defeat France, knocking out the UK in the process, then turn on the Soviet Union and win the war. Mm. During the phony war, the Allies had given Hitler time to prepare his forces. Now, he was ready to attack. The Allies had wanted to place troops in Belgium, but Belgium had refused, and in a move that surprised pretty much no one, Hitler launched an invasion to get around France's defenses. The Allies charged into Belgium at speed to meet the German invasion head on, and it looked like a repeat of the First World War was coming. But this time, Hitler had a trick up his sleeve. Blitzkrieg. As the Germans advanced, they sent thousands of refugees westward, slowing down the Allies. Then, to the south, the French had left the Ardennes, an area full of hills and forests, pretty underdefended because they thought it was naturally impenetrable. Well, the Germans were about to penetrate it with everything they had. They smashed 50 Wehrmacht divisions through and encircled the Allied armies at lightning speed. The best of the Allied forces were now trapped. The Germans squeezed in from all sides, taking out France's Quarter. best armies and nearly wiping out the British too. But they managed to make a desperate last-minute escape at Dunkirk, with British civilian ships even making the perilous journey to bring their young men home. With most of the French forces depleted, the Germans breezed through, taking wow. Paris, and France fell. What wow. the Germans couldn't do in World War I, Hitler had done just like that. Wow. 
Hitler hoped that with the fall of France, the UK would also lose hope and sue for peace. But quite annoyingly, it didn't, and he needed to secure the Western Front, so he tried to force them into submission with mind games. The UK were now all alone, and Hitler wanted to emphasize that. First of all, just before France fell, Italy finally declared war on the Allies, making the UK's situation even worse. Next, instead of just occupying all of France, Hitler occupied the coastal areas for defense, but allowed France to continue its existence as a German puppet state. This way, it looked like the UK's old ally had decided to switch sides. Hitler also hoped that the UK wouldn't attack any of her old ally's navy bases or colonies in Africa, giving Hitler an extra line of defense to the south, but the UK made sure to respond to this by sailing down to France's navy base in Algeria and wrecking a bunch of ships. So have at it. Hitler then began laying down plans for an invasion of Great Britain before German troops could land on British soil. He would first need air and naval superiority across the channel. Waves of German bombers came while the completely outnumbered RAF worked bravely around the clock in an attempt to quell the German attacks. At first, the Luftwaffe targeted British ports and coastal facilities. Then it attacked RAF bases, crippling the RAF's ability to defend the nation. And it looked like Hitler's Great British invasion was coming. But then, Churchill ordered a small, pretty insignificant bombing raid over Berlin. It didn't do much damage, but Hitler was furious, and he immediately ordered ordered the Luftwaffe to refocus its attacks on civilian targets in London. Children were sent off to the countryside, away from their parents to avoid danger, and frequent trips to air raid shelters became a daily occurrence. But British morale held firm, smiling, knitting, lounging casually. These people have balls of steel. This refocusing on London also gave the RAF breathing space to reorganize, so Hitler kind of shot himself in the foot there. Just a foot for now. Finally, the Luftwaffe sent one massive all-out attack on London, and the RAF successfully repelled it, destroying many of the German aircraft and placing air superiority firmly in British hands. Wow. Hitler's invasion had to be postponed, but the bombing of British cities continued for some time. This is insane. Oh, it's... Oh. I was about to say, there's a lot more left. Hold up, let me, let me know if y'all want to get to part two. Uh... Yeah, let me know if you want me to get to part two. Look at this Because I can baby. for sure get to uh, that. But, um, yeah, that's the video. Hope you all enjoyed it. More videos up as soon. <sighs> what can I say, man? What can I say? That was a go. Uh, amazing breakdown. You feel me? That's a talent. You gotta have a talent to do that. You know what I'm saying? And to just all the facts and just make it so so good and you got a comedic value to it but i gotta say it bro and it was, it's really interesting you know relearning more about history and everything but you think about it all this could have been all this could have been prevented how how could have been prevented if everyone just stood and just had their own crib and just stood to themselves niggas get greedy bro you feel me like like, like you know what i'm saying i said another like why can't we all just be gang bro but you know why not? Because people just greedy. They want this. They want that. And it's whatever. That's what they do, bro. Honestly, it's just it's just whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just what this is what they do. It's just what people do. But uh, yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. More videos dropping soon. And yeah, I will catch y'all next time. But make sure you go check out my other videos today because I got a, a lot of bangers dropped and a lot of bangers will continue to be dropped because the grind doesn't stop. You know what I'm saying? Road 250k. But that's it. Like, comment, subscribe, share if you can see more videos. Instagram's on the bottom of the screen. Also in the description if you want to hit me up, DM me, message me. Do all this shit so I can keep on spamming these videos out for y'all. I appreciate y'all so much for watching. It's your boy King Supreme. Catch y'all next time, homies.